Thanks for watching. And given a polynomial p, how are the zeros of the derivative p prime related to the zeros of p? Watch this video and find out. Because consider the following polynomial x cubed plus 4x squared minus 6x plus 4. And let's first find the zeros of this because by the rational roots theorem we can guess one root to be x is plus minus 1, plus minus 2, and plus minus 4. Simply divisors of minus 4 here because this coefficient is 1. And in fact, we can find that 2 is the lucky root. Therefore, how about we divide this polynomial by x minus 2? So using American long division, we have x cubed minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4 divided by x minus 2. What we get is we have an x squared here. So we get x cubed minus 2x squared, and we get minus 2x squared plus 6x. Because of this minus 2, let's get x squared minus 2x, which gives minus 2x squared, and then plus 4x. And finally, we have 2x minus 4, and then we simply have a plus 2, so 2x minus 4, and ding, 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 we get 0, meaning that this x cubed minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4 is just this times this, which now allows us to find the roots. So now, as mentioned, we get that this is x minus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 2. Now, to set it equal to 0, you could use the quadratic formula, but you don't have to, because after completing the square, we simply get x minus 1 squared and then plus 1. And if you set that equal to 0, you get x minus 1 squared equals minus 1. So x minus 1 is plus or minus i. So x is 1 plus or minus i, but also, of course, the other root x equals 2. So here, this polynomial has three roots, 2, 1 plus i, and 1 minus i. OK, why is this important? Because now let's plot the roots geometrically. Because if you look at this on the complex plane, there are three roots. One is the real root 2, and the other one are the complex roots 1 plus i and 1 minus i. And notice here, they form a triangle. And the question is, where are the roots of p prime? Well, let's figure this out because it's not too hard to calculate the roots of p prime because the derivative, I think we had an x cubed, so 3x squared, and then we have a minus 4x squared, so minus 8x, and then we had, I believe, a 6x, which gives you 6 and the constant term, which gives you 0. So if you set this equal to 0, you can then use the quadratic formula, which says that x is 8 plus or minus square root of minus 8 squared, so 64 minus 4 times 3 times 6 over 2a, so 2 times 3, which is 6 which simplifies quite nicely. It's 8 plus or minus square root of minus 8 over 6, which then gives you, well, 8 sixths is 4 thirds, then plus or minus, I think, 2 square root of 2i, which then gives you um, square root of 2i over 3. Because again, 2 sixths is 1 third. And in case you're curious what this is approximately equal to, well, this is roughly a 4 thirds plus or minus 0.47i, which actually helps us plot the roots because 4 thirds 
it's slightly bigger than one, maybe here, and then 0 0.47, well, you don't go that much higher. So it's probably somewhere here, that's one root, and this is the other root. And those are precisely the roots of P prime. Now, what do you notice geometrically? And this is the beautiful thing. The roots of P prime, they're precisely in the triangle formed by the roots of P. And it turns out this is always true, and it has such a nice name. It's called the Gauss-Lucas theorem. And by the way, you know it's good when it has Gauss in it, right? What does the Gauss-Lucas theorem say? It says that given a polynomial P, the roots of the derivatives are always in the convex hull of the original roots. What is the convex hull? It's just the smallest convex figure formed by the roots. So here we have three points, the convex hull is a triangle, and this theorem says, without even calculating P prime, we know that the roots are inside that triangle. Which, by the way, is super useful think in numerics. It says that, well, if you want to look for the roots of the derivative, you don't have to look outside of the triangle. It's precisely in it. Or, of course, also on the triangle is also fine. And you're probably like, wow, there's no way this can get better. Well, guess what? You're on Dr. Pi M show. So of course it can get better because there's even a better result. And this is what's called Marden's theorem. Such a nice name. And it's in the special case of three roots. So suppose you have three roots that form a triangle. And the question is, where are the roots of the derivative? Here's the awesome fact. If you have a triangle like this, well, it has midpoints maybe here, here, and here. And then it turns out there's precisely one ellipse that touches those midpoints. And this is what's called the Steiner's in ellipse. Like here, we have this ellipse that touches the midpoints of the triangle. And now the question is, where are the roots of the derivative? Drum roll, please. The roots of the derivative of this polynomial are precisely the foci of that in ellipse. In other words, to find the roots of P prime, just draw this ellipse that touches the points and just find the foci. What a beautiful geometric description. Who knew that polynomials could be so neat? So there you have it, Marden's theorem, in the case n equals 3, the roots of p prime are the foci formed by the Steiner's in ellipse of the roots of p, which completely solves the question, where are the roots of p prime, at least in the case n equals 3. And by the way, if you're interested in the proofs, this is a bit difficult to prove, but the proof of the Gauss-Lucas theorem is actually on my channel, but for YouTube members. So make sure to become a member and to watch that video. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.